Hi everyone, this is Prophetess Shanika Sutton. This prayer audio is for the judgment of witches. We are praying for the death of witches. Now recently the Lord revealed to me that evil altars speaking against you can hinder your progress at all times. So once it's still speaking, no matter how much you try, the altar is speaking, you're not going to move forward in any area. Unless, of course, you pray and fast and use the word, which is what we've been doing. However, there are other times when the altar workers are determined and they won't stop. And these altar workers are witches. So when they won't stop, you have to pray for them to die. For witches, it's either repentance or death. So if they don't want to repent, they have to die. Witches cause chaos in society. Most times you're going through issues and you don't even know that there are witches around you, your co-workers, your family, your friends. Sometimes they hire other witches who are on a higher level to stop you, to kill you, to cause you to be sick, to make you miserable, to block you from getting married, to hinder you from having children if you're a woman blocking your womb. A lot of times these things are caused by witchcraft. A lot of times... Your problems are caused by witches. They erect altars. They do rituals on these altars. They do blood sacrifice, sometimes animals, sometimes even human sacrifice. They do all of this in an effort to keep you bound. They don't want you to move forward. They don't want to see your children move forward. Many of them are very obsessive. Very obsessive. I have to teach before I go into the prior audio because some persons don't know all of this. The Lord revealed to me that many times you pray, things work out, you do warfare prayers, your dreams start to change, things start looking better and all of a sudden it starts getting bad again. That's because in addition to an altar still speaking against you, there is a altar worker which is a witch or a warlock if it's a male who is determined to keep you bound so they watch you they send monitoring spirits for you or sometimes they are around you and they watch you so once they see you moving forward they go right back ahead to work witchcraft again and to do more stuff on their evil altars to do more rituals on their evil altars to keep you bound so you see things going well now and next time it's not going well because there's a witch in the background working and they are very obsessive and jealous and they don't want to stop because they're determined that you will never progress. They, they believe, they act like they're God. So they believe that whatever they speak over you, whatever they want to happen to you, should happen to you. And they won't stop. Am I saying that witches won't repent? No. There are witches out there who have repented from their evil. But if they want to repent, God is going to let us know that we shouldn't pray for judgment for them. So you don't have to worry about that. You don't worry about, you just follow the priors that I'm, the, the prior points that I'm giving to you right now. If it's a case where they do want to repent, they will come to you and say, I'm sorry I was working witchcraft against you. The Lord will reveal to you that they want to repent or they will come up to you and say, I'm sorry. And after that, of course, you would need to pray for them to die because if they are really repentant and they have exposed themselves and they have confessed, then of course, we have to uh, give them a chance and allow God to deal with them. But outside of that, it's straight death. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. I have to explain all of this because a lot of persons um, don't believe in praying for death for witches. The Bible is very clear on that. We can't go against the word of God to suit our self-righteous beliefs. Because it is self-righteousness that tells you that we shouldn't pray for witches to die. Even though the Bible already says that suffer not a witch to live. We want to go with what the word says. Not how we feel and not what we think. Because a lot of times we think in limitation. No, we do think in limitation. And we, we, we don't understand that what God says is final and he knows what he's doing. Witches kill babies. So a lot of times when you see people dying, it's because of witches. They do human sacrifice. They cast spells on people to die. They cast spells on people not to move on. Witches are the reason why people are suicidal, are depressed, why people turn out their backs from God. Because they do all sorts of evil to keep... Uh, uh, wreaking havoc in their life so that things are really bad with them come on guys we have to get to a place where we appreciate the word of god for what it is suffer not a witch to live we're gonna go into the prior points 
those of you who are going to be using this every day, you can skip out this part. The, the teaching aspect of it is fine. But I have to say this because people need to know. After you've listened to this, if you want to just fast forward into the prior points, it's fine. You can go ahead. I'll put in the description bar where the prior points actually start and where the teaching ends. A lot of persons will say that, but Jesus preached love in the New Testament. That's true, but he also preached judgment. Now, in the very same New Testament in Acts 5, the Apostle Peter called on judgment on Ananias and Sapphira. Okay? And these people were witches. They withheld their money from God. The Bible does say that Satan filled up their hearts. They were Christians, but they allowed the devil to come into their hearts. So if calling down judgment was wrong, why is it that Peter called down judgment on these people for them to die? So in the New Testament, invoking the judgment of death, calling down the judgment of death on people is not a sin. A lot of persons will say that it's wrong because they don't understand the extent of which witches will go. A lot of times, they are determined to kill you and you have to pray for them to die first. Those of you who are worried about that they're human beings, at the end of the day, we are using the word of God to invoke judgment. Therefore, God is perfect. His word is perfect. If God sees that this person doesn't deserve judgment, but that they will repent, he will let us know. I said that already. God is not dumb and he's not deaf. So he's going to speak. And like I said, the person will confess anyway. They will expose themselves and confess. Outside of that, we will use the word of God. We are not taking it upon ourselves to kill anyone. Vengeance belongs to God. And that's exactly why we're using his word to invoke judgment because it belongs to God. When we use the word to speak judgment over these people, it's God who determines what will happen to them. It's God who will determine the judgment that they'll face or the kind of death that they'll face or when they should die or how they should die. We are not determining that. We are just using the word of God to invoke judgment. So at the end of the day, the ultimate judgment belongs to God. So we're not doing anything wrong. We're using his word. He said vengeance belongs to him. So we're using his word to pronounce judgment. I said this before, but I'm going to say it again. A lot of these witches are not going to stop unless they're dead. And that's the truth. That's why the Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. God already knew that there are some witches out there that will never repent and you have to pray for them to die for your life to go well you have to pray for them to die it makes no sense for you to be living a life of misery every time you try something it works for now and the next time it doesn't work because somebody is speaking against you it's not worth it invoke the judgment of God on this person invoke death on this person through using scripture not through anger not through bitterness and unforgiveness but through the word of god which is perfect in acts 8 the apostle peter told simon the sorcerer that he's gonna perish with his money that was peter pronouncing the judgment of death he was cursing simon the sorcerer that's exactly what we're doing we're pronouncing the judgment of death on these people because of their lifestyle the Bible says that witchcraft will always lead to death. Divination will always lead to death. So at the end of the day, once you practice witchcraft, once you're a witch, once you're a warlock, you're already on your way to death. Unless, of course, they repent, which we spoke about already. Once they do these things, they're opening up, opening up themselves to die. So you're not doing anything wrong by pronouncing death. You're only telling them what their faith is and you're only invoking God to do it soon so that you can live a stress-free life and you can move forward. That's all we're doing. I have to explain this so people can understand. It's not wrong. Somebody might be wondering, but what if this witch dies? Won't another one come against me? The good thing is that unlike before, when you were in ignorance, you're no longer in ignorance. So you now you know how to pray and now you know based on my teachings that your that the witch um that you're contending with can be uh, even your best friend your family member your co-worker your pastor your prophet church members
people who you think should be there for you, your boss, these things are very common. But know that you're you're more aware. I know that the Lord has used this ministry to help you to be more aware. You're not going to give people place in your life anymore. You're not going to be in ignorance anymore. Majority of the times, witches come in or witches attack us through ignorance. So we don't know that they're witches and we share certain information with them. We keep them close to us. Okay? They ask us certain questions and we answer. But now we're more aware it's going to be harder for the enemy to use his agents to come against you. They're still going to come against you. It's just going to be harder. And now you're more aware. You know how to pray judgment. You know uh, how to seek the Lord about who is doing what in your life. You know how to pray against evil altars. Though the enemy is going to use people to come against you in future, it's going to be more difficult because you're more equipped to war. Well, I'm about to start the prayer points now. So repeat after me. Pray along with me. Don't pray in your mind. Open your mouth and pray. It doesn't have to be loud, but you need to at least open your mouth. Jeremiah 4, verse 4. Lord, release your fury and let it come forth like fire and burn so that no one can quench it because of their evil doings. So we declare right now that the fire of God will fall upon these witches and they won't be able to quench it because of their evil doings. I didn't say the word of God said that the, the fire of God will fall upon these witches operating against us, operating against our life, uh, operating against our finances, our marriage, our children, our destiny, our purpose, our ministry. I declare right now that the fire of God will fall upon these witches now uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, the fire of God will fall upon these witches now uh, in Jesus' name. Wherever their camp is, wherever they set up their altars, uh, I send the fire of God to fall upon on their evil doings now in Jesus name I send the fire of God to fall upon their evil doings now in the name of Jesus Christ Exodus 22 verse 18 thou shalt not suffer a witch to live we said that before but we're going to say it again thou shalt not suffer a witch to live so every witch operating against our lives right now I declare that the judgment of God will fall upon them I declare that death will fall upon them for the word of God already established that a witch should not live so the judgment of God will fall upon them now I said death will fall upon them now they will stop their evil doings all of what they're doing to others all the evil that they're doing to hold back others and to make others lives miserable it will come to an end but the judgment of God is going to fall upon them now Numbers 23 verse 23 and I love this verse of scripture for there is no sorcery against Jacob nor any divination against Israel it must now be said of Jacob and of Israel oh what God has done so all the sorcery that they have done against us Jacob meaning God's people Israelites all we are we are part of the body of Christ we are, we're all being adopted in one family so the same favor that God extended to Israelites is applicable to us now so all the sorcery that they have done against us and the divination that they have done against us it will not stand they will say instead oh what God has done so their witchcraft will not stand their divination their, their evil altars their witchcraft powers whatever it is that they're doing their rituals their sacrifices they will never stand in Jesus name I declare that the judgment of God will fall upon every altar worker now in Jesus name those working on altars to keep us bound and to stop us from moving forward I said the judgment of God will fall upon them now death will be their portion in Jesus name I said death will be their portion in Jesus name I said death will be their portion in the name of Jesus Christ Micah 5 verse 12 the Lord says he will cut off witchcraft so I declare right now based on the authority of the word of God every witchcraft affecting us will be cut off in Jesus name every witchcraft poor affecting us will be cut off including the witches they shall be cut off and their life shall come to an end in Jesus name the witches working against us they shall be cut off and their life shall come to an end in Jesus name the witches working against us they shall be cut off and their life shall come to an end in the mighty name of Jesus Christ when I'm praying guys repeat the the, the scriptures um, whenever I say them you repeat after me it was the word of God that brings deliverance the word of God is, is like fire and like hammer breaking any rock into pieces that's Jeremiah 23 verse 29 so it's the word of God that's gonna uh, operate against these witches and their witchcraft okay so ensure that when you're praying with me that you repeat the scriptures after me Micah 5 verse 11 
I will cut off the cities of your land and throw down all your strongholds. I will cut off sorcerers from your hand and you shall have no soothsayers. This is God declaring that he's going to cut off sorcerers from your hand. And there will be no more soothsayers. Those of you who don't know who soothsayers are, they're psychics, witches, read a woman, read a man. In Jamaica, that's what they call them. They read your palm. These are, the, they're the same thing. Soothsayers, they're still witches. Same thing. Those of you who have been to psychics, you need to repent. If you've repented already, renounce the connection that you made and the covenant you made with them when you went in for them to read your palm or for, for them to give you a reading. It's God who is saying that he will cut off their sorceries and there shall be no more soothsayers. So I declare right now that the sorcery that they have been working against us shall be cut off. The sorcerers themselves will be cut off. They will no longer work against us. They will no longer operate against us. For the God's hands are lifted up against our enemies and they shall be cut off. That's what the word of God says. And they shall be cut off. So witches shall be cut off in the name of Jesus Christ. I said witches shall be cut off in Jesus name. God's hands are lifted up against our enemies and they shall be cut off. We will no longer hear about them. We will hear that they died. A good friend of mine told me that after the witch died in his community, he was able to get married. Can you believe that? He wasn't able to get married for so many years and he was praying, praying, praying. And God revealed to him that there's a witch right in your community who has an altar for you not to get married. He prayed for her to die and just like that, he got married. Sometimes you're not going to move forward until these witches die. Am I saying that God is not enough to deliver you while they're alive? Of course, but because of their persistence, their jealousy and their pride, many of them won't, won't ever stop. So even when you move forward and even when you get your blessing, they're, they're going to try to come back again, try to make your life miserable. That's why you have to cut them off and pray for them to die. Psalm 149, 69 says, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. That's us. We, we're, we're the believers. The praises of God will be in our mouth and the two-edged sword, which is the word of God, those of you who don't know the Bible speaks about the word of God uh, being our sword. So we have the sword in our hand and we're going to execute vengeance. Okay, so the Bible says, and read it again, Psalm 149, 69. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand to execute judgment upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. So right now we're executing vengeance with the word of God. That's what I spoke about earlier in, the, in, in our audio. I said that we are using the word of God to execute vengeance. We are not taking it, upon, taking it upon ourselves. We're using the word of God, which is perfect. So the word of God, which is the sword, is in our hands. And we will execute judgment and execute vengeance upon witches because of their evil doings. So right now, every witch will experience the vengeance of God and the judgment of, of God right now in Jesus' name. Every which operated against us will experience the vengeance of God and the judgment of death upon their lives because of the evil doings that they have done to us and others. I execute the vengeance of God right now and the judgment of God upon their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for death shall be their portion. The vengeance of God shall be their portion. They shall all be cut off. Some of these witches will never hear about them again. The judgment of God is going to come upon them and we're not going to hear about them again. I pray, I really pray that some of them repent. But we can't determine if people will, re will repent. We can, we can only determine what we will do. Continuing from the same verse, we execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. Punishment upon the witches to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So we declare right now that they will be in bondage and we execute upon them the judgment of God, the judgment of death, that there will be no more. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. The same verse of scripture. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh and they shall be drunk with their own blood as sweet wine. All flesh know that I, the Lord, am your savior and your redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. That's God defending his people. That's him promising us that all of the evil that they have done to us will go right back on them. That's God letting us know that judgment will be their portion, that they will drink their own blood. So that means that death will be their portion. Jezebel came after the prophet Elijah and because of her evil doings, a pronouncement and a prophecy was made that she will fall and dogs will lick her blood. And she fell out of a window and dogs came up and licked her blood. So when evil people, witches, Jezebel was a witch, when evil people come against true children of God, death 
will always be their portion. Judgment will always be their portion unless, like I said, they repent. And if they want to repent, they're going to confess because there's no repentance without confession. So the fact that they're still hiding and still doing all this against you, it means that they don't want to repent or they, they choose not to repent. Just as how Jezebel fell through the window and dogs licked her blood, so it is that God will execute judgment upon our enemies. They will fall and they will die. And they will die publicly. And their, their evil will be exposed in Jesus' name. Psalm 109, verses 15. Now this is for people who don't want to repent. May their sins always remain before the Lord, that he may blot out their name from the earth. So I declare that every witch working against us and blocking us from moving forward, erecting altars in rituals for us not to move forward, I said that their names will be blotted out from the earth. In Jesus' name, their names will be blotted out from the earth. In Jesus' name, their names will be blotted out from the earth. We'll hear about them no more. Death shall be their portion. For he never thought of doing kindness, but hounded to death the poor and the needy and the brokenhearted. This is, this is exactly what these people are doing. They don't, they don't think of kindness. But instead, they attack poor people. They attack people who are, who, who even if they're not poor, that they're poor in spirit, they're broken hearted. Even if they're not poor physically, they attack them because they're helpless. He loved to pronounce a curse and make, uh, come back to him. So those who are declaring and, and wishing and, 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 and doing rituals for us to die, it's gonna fall, that the same curse is gonna fall right back on them. Death shall be their portion. I didn't say it, the word of God did. Sometimes people will say things like, we shouldn't pray back to send the prayers. I do not agree with that. The word of God doesn't say that. I've seen on many occasions, especially in um, Psalms, where the same thing, where David pronounced that the same thing that his enemies did to him may come back on them. Some people will say, oh, but that's the Old Testament. We shouldn't be using it. No, the Bible says all scriptures are profitable for teaching. Every single scripture, whether old or new, you're profitable for teaching. And I already used Peter as an example of somebody who pronounced judgment in, in the New Testament and he did it from a righteous standpoint. It was not sinful. Verse 18 says, 109, Psalm 109, verse 18. He wore cursing as his garment. It entered into his body like water, into his bones like oil. So the same thing. And the same curses that they're pronounced will enter them and enter their lives and their bodies instead. A death shall be their portion. May it be like a cloak wrapped about him, like a belt tied forever around him. That's how that that's what's gonna happen when the judgment of God falls upon them and death falls upon them. May it be like cloak wrapped about him, like like a belt tied forever around him. May this be the Lord's payment to my accusers, to those who speak evil of me. This will be their repayment. Those who are speaking evil of you, those who are cursing you, those who are, uh, who, are, who, are, who, are who are doing incantations against you for you not to move forward. But you, sovereign Lord, help me for your name's sake. Out of the goodness of your love, deliver me. God will deliver us. Out of the goodness of his love, he's going to deliver us from these evil people, from these witches. Death will be their portion. Just as how God allowed Pharaoh to be drowned in the Red Sea after he tried to pursue the children of Israel when they were being released. It's the same way some of us, we have some fears in our lives. God is delivering us, but they, 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 they may, they've already made up their minds that they don't want us to be delivered. That we should be under their bondage, that we should do what they say, that they should ensure that our lives never go well. But the same way how Pharaoh was drowned in the Red Sea is the same way how when our enemies or when these witches come after us, they'll be drowned in the Red Sea. They'll be dead. Judgment, the judgment of God will come upon them. God will use his angels to execute judgment upon them. And there shall be, they shall be no more upon this earth because of the evil that they have done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All witches affecting us will be cut off in Jesus' name. All witches affecting us uh, will be cut off. Uh, we pronounce death uh, upon witches in Jesus' name. I declare that we'll be free like the children of Israel and our pharaohs will die. We will be free like the children of Israel and our pharaohs will die. And the Egyptians that we see today, we shall see them no more and forever. Come on, somebody say it with me. The Egyptians that I see today, I shall see them no more and forever. Come on, one last time. The Egyptians that we see today, we shall see them no more and forever. One last time. The Egyptians that we see today, we shall see them no more and forever. Because God is going to execute the judgment of death upon them. Psalm 37. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass. 
so the witches in our lives the people fighting against us and holding us back they shall soon be cut down like grass that's what the word of god says so we don't have to worry about what they're doing god is going to cut them off and they're going to wither as the green herb wither which suggests that they will die just as the green herb this is what the word of god promises us trust in the lord and do good dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness god is faithful to us i listen i pray for which is to die before i remember there's one particular person i prayed for that person to die he was wreaking havoc for years and he died after two weeks i fasted and prayed for 21 days and after two weeks he died just like that just like that i i when i heard that he died i i, I almost couldn't believe it because it's been so long that i've been here about hearing about his wickedness and what he's been doing it, it was so long but it finally happened because god is faithful and his word is true and he said those who are doing evil they shall soon be cut off it's just sometimes we have to invoke judgment and use the word of god for it to happen swiftly psalm 37 verse 4 delight yourself also in the lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart commit your way to the lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass he's going to bring to pass what we've been praying about he's going to bring to pass the judgment of these witches and he's going to bring to pass what the, what we've been praying about what they were blocking what they were hindering the prophecy the dream that he gave us he's going to bring it to pass these witches will no longer block our prophecies they'll no longer block our goals or career or dreams whatever it is that we set out to do they'll no longer block us because they shall be cut off do not fret because of him who prospers in his ways. Sometimes it looks like the evil people are prospering in their ways. But the Bible says we shouldn't fret about them. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, don't fret about that man. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. So we shouldn't be angry. Do not fret. The Bible says it's on, it only causes harm when we fret about them. Instead, we need to use the word of God and believe God. For verse 9, Psalm 109, Psalm... 37 excuse me verse 9 says for evil doers shall be cut off that's what the bible says we shouldn't worry about them for evil doers shall be cut off and, and they that wait upon the lord shall inherit the earth for in a little while the wicked shall be no more that means that after you've prayed with this audio after you've used the word of god after you after you've made up your mind to be consistent in prayer and invoking judgment upon them the Bible says that after a little while, they shall be no more. The wicked shall be no more. After a little while, that means that we're not, we're not going to wait long. I remember praying for a witch to die. And it didn't take long. It seemed as if this person wasn't going to die. Because I've been hearing all, all about these years of wickedness. I've been hearing all about these years of witchcraft that this person was doing. But after I went on 21 days fast, I used the word of God, they died. Uh, and a lot of things released were released in my life after that. So I know what I'm talking about when I say that witches must die and a lot of times for us to be delivered. So we're at verse 12, Psalm 37, verse 12. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him for he sees that his day is coming. So we need to be happy too. God is laughing at our enemies. God is laughing at these witches because he knows that their day is going to come. Death shall be their portion. Judgment shall be their portion. And the wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast on the poor and needy. So they have done a lot of evil to keep you bound and to keep you cast down. To slay those who are of upright conduct. Many of them are, are, are speaking curses for you and your children to die and your family. Their sword shall enter their own heart. So the very sword that they are releasing against us, it shall enter their own heart. That means whatever trap they have set against us, it's going to affect them instead. It's going to backfire on them instead. Their bows shall be broken. Their sword shall enter their own heart. That means death. Death shall be their portion for the sword that they have set out against you, that they have released against you. It shall enter their own heart and death shall be their portion. Verse 18, the Lord knows the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish. That's what's going to happen to our enemies. That's what's going to happen to the witches fight against us. They shall vanish. They will perish. They are enemies of God, which is our enemies of God. 
and like the splendor of the meadows they shall vanish that's what the word of god says like the splendor of the meadows they shall vanish into smoke they shall vanish away verse 27 psalm 37 verse 27 depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore for the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. He's not going to forsake our prayers. He's not going to forsake our cry for judgment. They are preserved forever. That's us, the righteous. If you're not a Christian, that means you need to repent. If you're not living right, you need to repent. You need to ask God to forgive you. It doesn't make sense for you to invoke judgment upon witches. When you, you, you yourself, you're in covenant with the devil. You entertain the devil in different ways. So if you know that you're not living right, if you know that you're not a Christian, you're not saved, ask God to come into your heart. I have an audio for that. Those who need, um, who want to be saved, you can contact us and we lead you into the prayer of repentance. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. But these witches in our lives, God will preserve us. But the witches in our lives, they shall be cut off. And none of their evil will prevail against us. Every trap for death that they have set up against us will never prevail. Every bondage that they have placed us under, Jesus Christ has already delivered us from it. But the Bible says when we call upon God, he'll answer us and deliver us. So every bondage, every trap that they have set for us, it will never prevail in Jesus' name. We're already delivered from the hands of the enemy. We're set free from whatever evil that they're doing. And death shall be their portion. I said death shall be their portion. I said death shall be their portion in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. But every trap that they have set for us, it will be their portion. Every every death trap that they have set for us, it shall be their portion in Jesus' name. It shall never be our portion, for we shall live and not die. We shall live and not die. We shall live and not die. Witches will die because of their evil. Wait on the Lord, says Psalm 37, verse 34, and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. When these evil people are cut off, we will see it. I have seen the wicked in great power spread himself like a native green tree, yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. That's what's going to happen to us. We have seen the witches in great power holding us back, setting us back, spreading themselves like a native green tree. This is what the word of God is saying. But yet he passed away and behold, he was no more. That will be your portion. Try your best when you're praying with, these, with this audio to repeat the scriptures after me. You can find them yourself and write them down. Or you can, uh, when, I, when I'm, I'm praying, you, you pause the audio and, and repeat them. Or you just try to repeat after me as best as possible. Whichever suits you. But the wicked who was in great power passed away and he was no more that's what's gonna happen the witches that were in great power passed away and they will be no more the wicked that was in great power affecting our lives blocking our lives putting down altars doing rituals they shall be no more for they shall be cut off indeed i sought him verse 36 indeed i sought him but he could not be found so it is that when we are looking for some of these witches we will not find them they will not be found because they're dead for death shall be their portion the future of the wicked shall be cut off. Verse 38. The transgressors shall be destroyed together and the future of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. God is our strength and he's our, he's our salvation and he will rescue us from these witches. But the future of these witches shall be cut off. That means they will no longer have a future because they'll be dead. When you're dead, you don't have a future because you're already dead. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. That's us. This is verse 40. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver us from the wicked. Save us and because we trust him. He shall deliver us from the wicked. And he will save us because we trust him.